Hello. In this video, I thought I'd talk about a topic that's frustrated many of us who do electronic repair, and that's desoldering. Over the years, I found it very frustrating many times trying to remove all the solder from the circuit boards. And part of the reason for that is because on the newer circuit boards, a lot of times they're double-sided, and they use a higher temperature solder, and it can be very frustrating trying to get all the solder off the board so you can remove the component. So I'll talk about some of the different techniques I've used, what I started out with and what I found the best, and hopefully you'll find the information helpful. Now one of the first things I started out with was one of these El Cheapo uh, Radio Shack desoldering tools. They worked a little bit, uh, I should say most of the time, although that was when I was mostly dealing with the single-sided circuit boards. And they had a little rubber ball at the end and you simply squeeze it. You'd hold your iron over the, uh, on the circuit board rather, and you'd, you'd let go a little rubber ball and create a little bit of a vacuum and pull the solder off the circuit board. Well, I found that a lot of times it didn't do that great of a job, and I'd find myself taking my propane torch and superheating it to get it hot enough to do the job. And I still didn't uh, always have that great of success. So then I started, uh, I modified my tool. I put one of these conventional solder sucker tools here. I put a little rubber hose on here. And I found that when I pushed this in, heated it with my propane torch while keeping it plugged in too, and I pushed this button. And, uh, Still wasn't quite adequate though, and it, it, a lot of times it took a lot of time. It was a bit of a nuisance. Of course, there's wire wick. Most of you are familiar with wire wick. It often does a pretty good job, but I found out even wire wick a lot of times wouldn't soft pull the solder out of the metal sleeve that would be between the top and the bottom of the circuit board. I'm sure a lot of you know what I'm talking about. And so uh, I bought this stuff called Quick Chip. Now, Quick Chip is a very low temperature solder. It's so low temperature, I think you could pull your iron away and it'd probably stay molten for a good 15 seconds. And I found it very helpful in conjunction with using my wire wick or even one of these conventional uh, desoldering tools. It helped a lot if the, if the solder stayed molten. So what I would do is I would super, or I'd heat the connection, I'd add a little of the uh, quick chip, the low temperature solder, or sometimes even conventional solder helped and I would have better luck that way. But recently I finally sprung for one of these fancy Hakko 808 electric desoldering tools and I have to tell you this thing is fantastic. I wasn't sure what to expect. I didn't know if I was just going to be throwing money I didn't really need to spend. But I'm going to tell you this is well worth the money in my opinion. If you're only going to do occasional repair I could see you know trying to get by with something less expensive. But uh, the Hakko 808 is, a, is very quick. In fact um, what I did was I, I used various desoldering techniques on this circuit board right here, and I'm going to let you see under a magnifying glass what they look like so you can see what a good job this thing does. And, and it was quick. You know, it's got a little vacuum in it. In fact, let me plug it in for you, show you how it works. Uh, it's got a little vacuum in here, so when you push the trigger, it creates a vacuum, and the solder gets sucked right into this little uh, plastic chamber here, real easy to remove. It's a spring-loaded mechanism and, and very easy to clean, so um, I think it's going to save me a, a lot of time desoldering. In fact, not only that, uh, a lot of times when I use some of these other techniques and I found myself using my propane torch to superheat this little gadget, I often uh, did a little damage to the board. I didn't, I didn't have a good uh, temperature rated or regulated uh, iron in this technique. Anyway, um, I'm going to quit uh, jabbing here. I'm going to show you what the circuit board looks like using the various desoldering tools. Well, if I can hold my camera steady, I'm going to go ahead and give you a quick demonstration of how effective this desoldering tool is. Go ahead and put that on there and get a good molten. <coughs> Push the trigger. One. Oh, having a hard time getting it on there because I'm holding the circuit board with one hand and <coughs> two. Let's see. Uh, forgive my clumsiness here. This is very hard if you saw the setup I have. There we go. Take a look at that, folks. Did an excellent job. And that was fast. I had to do comparison using the old technique to show you the difference. But as you can see, that went real quick and it did a pretty good job. Okay, the... Uh, first connection you're looking at here was 
done with the Hacko electric desoldering tool and as you can see it did a very good job of pulling the solder out of the holes there and it was very fast in fact I, on one of these I didn't even uh, I did two of them here using the Hacko and one of them I didn't even dilute the solder first with a little low temperature solder I just went right at it and it did a, a really good job as you can see and the next one was with my uh, my little Radio Shack desoldering tool and as you can see there's still solder in the holes and it didn't do that great of a job so I can see I would definitely have had to go over that for a while and uh, you know I eventually got them clean with the Radio Shack tool and a little extra heat but it always took a long time it was a bit of a nuisance and so the next one here I just just used plain wire wick and as you can see the wire wick didn't pull the solder out of the holes at all it's it's still full of solder in there now if we move on here to a different part of the board this is one where I use just plain old uh, well, I use the desoldering tool and the quick chip the low temperature solder and it did a fairly good job it, it took a while to do it though and uh, as you can see there's still a little bit of solder in the hole so if you have to uh, or if you can't afford a hacko uh, that might be a a good way to do it and here's another one here where I use the wire wick and the quick chip and you can see it did a fairly good job but again I was there a while working at it I should have recorded the time it took to do each one of these because uh, you know these ones here were a bit time consuming so for what it's worth those are some of the techniques I've been using and um, I think the uh, the Hacko 808 is a very good desoldering tool if you do a lot of this type of work I, I believe it's a good investment anyway while I'm on the topic of desoldering, I forgot to mention my Hot Air Rework station. This is the unit I picked up on eBay for about $60, and it turned out to be a very good deal. I'm very pleased with it. It's got a temperature adjustment right here. I can go up or down. It'll go up to 500 degrees, and I've also got a fan speed control right here. Now, you'll notice, even though this thing isn't on right now, the fan is still running, and the reason for that They've got this designed so that as soon as you pull that out of the holder, you'll notice the temperature starts rising. And when I put it back in the holder, the temperature starts going down, but they leave the fan running, and that prolongs the life of the element right here. So this particular unit came with several different tips, and I used a small one here for uh, what I'm about to do. I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate this for you. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and heat up this little capacitor here. Again, I'm working on a very difficult situation. I've got a magnifying glass held over the circuit board. But I'm going to go ahead and heat that up and then take my tweezers. And hopefully pull that right off there. There we go. There's a, another useful desoldering technique. And of course, if you need to resolder it, you just put it back in place with some solder paste. Heat it up. And it melts, melts right into place. Anyway. I'm here to talk about desoldering anyway, so we'll leave it at that.